Good day to you, child of God. This is the Remnant City Bible Study Channel. Welcome. Today's subject is in the image of God. It's going to be a long one. Let's jump into this. We are made in the image of God and not Satan. Satan is actively trying to destroy, to distort the creation of God by making his own creation. And here's your Hebrew word for image. It's Salim. And you can see it basically means almost exactly the same thing in the Hebrew. We're made in the image of God and the angels. Genesis 1.26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now he was talking, speaking of himself and his creation at that time, uh, which everybody before he created mankind, everybody was in spiritual bodies. So that's why he uses this plural, let us, speaking about Elohim, God and the angels. Now, many scholars claim that God was speaking about himself in the plural as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or Father, Son, and the Word. But Elohim refers to those who were present with God at the time he created mankind. That's why he uh, used the word uh, us. I believe this is referring to celestial beings and not terrestrial mankind. You've got to make the distinction, beloved. God created celestial mankind and placed the terrestrial spiritual body inside of you at, at the moment of conception. Your spirit was created long before it was placed in the womb of your mother, and the most logical conclusion to me is at the beginning of this age, God was speaking to his children uh, before he created mankind and simply said, let us, meaning God and his children, make mankind in our image and children being the sons of God in the spiritual sense. So we are made in the image of the Lord. So if you try to you know, take away from that, you are going against the plan of God. And that's exactly what the devil's is doing right now and he's been doing it since the beginning of this earth age and it's been a battle of dna for since the beginning beloved the devil tried to do it in the garden of eden and he sent the fallen angels i mean it's been a battle it's been ongoing since the beginning of this earth age genesis 2 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat it, of it, for in the day that thou uh, eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, essentially, the Lord was saying Eve was not to mix her seed with the devil. And that's what this metaphor means. And what happened is that Adam and Eve both got seduced by the devil, beloved. This is not a fairy tale. This is what really happened in the garden. Now, I'm going to go into speculation here. Um, and, you know, this is my interpretation, so don't, you know, don't blame me for anything. <clears throat> my interpretation is my own, and I have the right to present this, but I believe this is the truth, beloved. Um, now, this is my take for the plans that the devil has for us. And basically, it involves the control of your DNA, and it started in the Garden of Eden. Since the beginning of this earth age, there's been a battle for the DNA of mankind. Until recently, we didn't know what the helix curve is. And I'll show you that this is the curve that was taken out of Adam's side. It was simply saying that the Lord took the DNA from Adam and created an exact copy in Eve. Uh, the Lord knew all along what DNA was. And this is the way he chose to explain it. In, in the account in the Garden of Eden. The first prophecy in the Bible is regarding the children of Cain and the children of Adam who have different fathers and different DNA. And most of your false teachers are never going never gonna to open this up for you, beloved. They just read right over it. It's too, too much for them. The word generation in Hebrew is from the prime tali, talad, number 3205 in the Strong's means to give birth or bear children or Tolda in the Hebrew, uh, 8435, it's descendant, family, or birth. So this has everything to do with your DNA, beloved. 
This was the first attempt to pollute the seed line that Christ would come through and also to pollute the seed line of mankind. This is the devil's plans, beloved. Now, let's go to Genesis 3.15, and I will put in enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And this is the prophecy of the bruisers. In the end, we will bruise the head of Satan and take him out. Now, um, let's go to this word Kenite from the Hebrew word Kayan. Strong 7014, which means first child or first murderer. Genesis 3.13, the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this, this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. It's simply saying that the fruit, the fruit, the metaphor is that actually Eve had intercourse with the devil. And this is exactly what happened. What happens when you have intercourse uh, without protection? Uh, a child is born. Uh, all right, so this is exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. All right, what was the fil fulfillment of the first prophecy? Cain killing Abel in Genesis 4, 8. And Cain ta uh, talked with Abel, his brother, and came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And the Lord was saying to Satan that in the future generations far removed from me, there would be enmity, enmity between the two seas. And beloved, they, the, the uh, Kenites have control of the four hidden dynasties. These are the progeny of the devil, and make no mistake about it. This is not a game, beloved. And the second attempt by Satan to pollute the DNA of mankind was through the fallen angels of Genesis 6. As a result, the Lord destroyed them all in a flood of Noah. When you, when you examine the reason why the Lord did this, it was because of the mixing with the fallen angels. And Enoch was preaching against this boy. He was all out preaching against mixing with these fallen angels. And Christ said, it's going to be just as in the days of Noah. The same thing is going to happen again, beloved. As further proof of why Noah's family was spared, they were the only people who had not mixed with the fallen angels. The word generation is used to describe the purity of Noah's DNA, not his morality. Uh, and the word perfect comes in there too. Uh, uh, basically, uh, perfect means, you know, could be translated mature. And it, this, this, this word generation would be better rendered pedigree. They didn't mix. They kept their self pure. And they were purely Adamic, beloved, and make no mistake about it. Scripture tells us that there was more than one influx of these fallen angels after the flood of Noah, and they're still present to this day. To sum, up, sum this up, we have two different types of DNA pollution in mankind today. One from the fallen angels, which are the Nephilim, and the other from the devil in the Garden of Eden. One is a descendant of the Nephilim, and the other a descendant of the devil. And this is, this, happen, this is going on today, beloved, and most people are completely unaware uh, of this fact. Now, fast forward to today. Tech, technology has allowed us to go into the twilight zone with DNA manipulation and gene therapy. We now have the technology to change the genetic makeup of mankind. Look at the way these DNA companies are advertising for you to find out your family history under the guise of curiosity. They're gathering a database of DNA, and they're going to use it for promotion or destruction of certain races. And make no mistake about it, beloved, that's what, what's going on right now. They are prepping, prepping you to destroy you. <laughs> and this current medical procedure is part of that beloved i'm firmly convinced the devil would be the, the devil would like to exterminate every last person who is of the 12 tribes of israel and beloved you see a concerted effort in the world today to marginalize the house of israel and they would love the devil would love nothing more than to get rid of the, what i call the god seed the house of israel <clears throat> the ones who carry the, the blessing of God. Of course, all Christians carry the blessing of God, but the family of God is very important. They're related to Jesus Christ through DNA. Okay? Um, now, uh, all right. So I'm going to speculate again here. 
If I were the devil, this is exactly what I would do. I'd use this technology to exterminate the God seed and promote the progeny of Cain and the fallen angels. And that's exactly what is going on right now. We're seeing this move. This, it's, it's in full force right now, beloved. Look at the current medical procedure. The doses are color-coded. And I believe there are as many as six different doses. What if these doses were designed to kill the God seed? And then on the other hand, uh, there are placebos for the evil seed so they can remain alive. That's exactly what this is. This is a dog and pony show. You see him getting up there and, and doing this in front of everybody in the world. And it's nothing but a stage. They're staging and it's a lie. It's a, it's, it's a joke on you. Does this sound diabolical and maybe just a little bit too much for you? Well, maybe you should rethink that. The devil is hard at work in the world today and is a common goal among his followers. They're in lockstep with each other uh, under one ruler, and that, that is uh, Satan himself. They're preparing the way for the entrance of the Antichrist, their leader. Now let's go to Genesis 1.21. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he woman, and he brought her unto, uh, unto the man. So Genesis 1.21 is the first mention of DNA in the Bible. The Lord took the DNA <clears throat> from Adam, and placed and, and then created Eve. So they were both twins, exact photocopies of each other. And their DNA was virtually the same, but they were male and female. In Genesis 2.22, ribs uh, 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 in the Strong's Concordance of the Hebrew, number 6763, um, and as you can see, as curved, and, and the ribs are curved. This is, a, this is a description of either, you know, the ribs is being curved, but I believe this is a reference by God to the helix curve. And, you know, the helix curve is our very genetic makeup. That helix curve shows exactly every one of your traits that God has given you, and God placed those traits there himself. Creation of mankind and the forming of the atom. And I get, I'll bet you most of you do not know that the creation of the six-day creation and what I call the, the eighth-day formation of the atom are completely different. And I'm not going to go over this for the sake of time, um, but suffice to say that um, one was created and one was formed. And if you notice that uh, he created, look at Genesis 127, and I'll show you the difference. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Now, beloved, um, you can't have, uh, you, you can't have both. Um, God created at this time, he created male and female. He didn't draw this creation from the rib of Adam. You see, this is a cre the six-day creation where God created them both. He created all the races on the sixth day, and he said it was good. And then on the eighth day, what I call the eighth day, notice he didn't have a man to till the soil, and he formed Adam from the dust of the gr ground and breathed into his uh, nostrils, the breath of life. This is a completely different account of, of, uh, of Adam and then the six-day creation. Now notice the words male and female created he them. Look at Genesis 2-7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And that God caused a deep sleep to, to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. This explains perfectly the, God just taking the DNA from Adam and creating Eve. It, it's, it, it's a perfect explanation. 
All right, in Genesis 127, God created male and female at one time, and in Genesis 2:7, he formed the Adam with the article. It's emphatic. He was the Adam, not mankind in general. From the dust, and then later in verse 22, he took the curved rib from Adam and created woman. I believe there's a reason why God chose the words created and formed, to make the distinction between the Adam to which Christ would come, and then mankind in the plural sense to describe all of the different and distinct races. The man that was formed would be a direct link to Jesus Christ, umbilical cord to umbilical cord in the flesh, genealogy. This is why the emphasis is placed on the formation of the Adam with the article in in the Hebrew text in Genesis 2-7. Jesus Christ is a direct descendant of Eve, the mother of all living. She was taken from the rib of Adam, the English translation declares, but it would be more accurate accurate to translate the Hebrew word tsala to curve. 6760 in her strongs. Women have curves, curves, but now modern science has revealed the helix curve, which is the key to our genetic makeup as human beings. Eve was a genetic photocopy of Adam, only she was female. Okay, I'm going to... All right, uh, let's see. All right, let's just go, let's just grow. I'm gonna let you uh, read the, the rest of this, the creation and the formation, because I wanna stick to the subject, which is the DNA of mankind. All right, now modern theologians have made the false claim that the creation and the formation are just a reiteration of the creation of Adam and Eve. Not true, just look at the key words here uh, that are mankind created and the man, the man formed. And they have to be looked at in the Hebrew text here. One has the article and the other doesn't. It's just that simple. As one means, uh, one, uh, it's just as simple as that. Once, uh, one is, excuse me, beloved, one is man or mankind and the other is man. These are two distinct different accounts of the creation, the formation of mankind and man or Adam. The difference is so clear in the Hebrew text. Man created and man formed. Now here are the Hebrew words. So you got uh, Hebrew 1254, bara, and then you got formed. It's your Hebrew 3335, yetzar. And then you got your words for, for man, which is Adam. It means man. And then you got your Strong's Hebrew 119, Adam, uh, to be dyed red, ruddy complected. And this tells us that these are Caucasians, beloved. They're ruddy complected. They show blood in the face. That's what an, the Adamic race is. Now, let's go into E.W. Bullinger's uh, account for man, the word man. Now, there are four principal Hebrew words rendered man, but these must be carefully discriminated. Every occurrence is noted in the margin of the companion Bible. They represent him from the four different points of view. Now, Adam denotes his origin as being made from the dust, Adama, ground, Latin homo. Each has regard to sex, a male, or female, Enosh has regard to his infirmities as physically mortal uh, and as to character incurable. And Geber has uh, respect to his strength, a mighty man. And then I go into all the different uh, meanings there, beloved. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he, him, male and female. Genesis 2, 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it and blessed that. It, and he had rested from all his work which God had created and made. And every plant of the field, it was in the earth, and every herb of the, of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. And this is, the, the, the Lord is almost like having second thoughts. He says, I ain't got nobody to take care of the, the farm down here. 
Uh, so he kind of, uh, like an afterthought, created Adam. But, beloved, make no mistake, it's not an afterthought. All right. Um, Bullinger's explanation is logical. He mentions God, the Son, and the Word. But my own belief is that God was speaking to his children, uh, the Elohim, while they were in their celestial bodies at the time before creation. This was before the creation of all terrestrial creatures. Now, in reference to the word us in Genesis 1.26 below, and this is, a, this, is an, this is Elohim, and it occurs 2,700 times in the Bible. And I'm not going to go over this explanation from you. This suffice to say that this is not God referring to himself in the plural. This is God referring to himself and his creation as Elohim when he says us. Now below are, are, are great examples why everybody should have a strong concordance and you should be in it every time you study the Bible. If you will notice, the last example speaks of the spine or the backbone as a tree. The conclusion is that these humans are not a literal tree as in the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, and lastly, the trees in the midst of the garden who were part of the six-day creation of mankind. What God was saying to both Adam and Eve was that it was all right to partake of the other trees in the midst of the garden, but not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The word tree is used to symbolize the backbone or spine of a human being and not a literal tree, and it's found in the Hebrew. And it's the number 6086, it's etz, and then you got another one is 6095, it's atash, atsa, I mean atsa, atsa. And it means spine or backbone. So when you stand there, put your arms out, uh, without your flesh, you look like a tree. And that's basically how the Hebrew describes uh, man in this particular account. Genesis 2, 9, And out of the ground made the, Lord, uh, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2, 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest it freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Now I look at the word serpent, and it's nakash. It's a divine um, encanter. Uh, it's his role as the liar, the whisperer in, in Eve's ear, telling her, Thou shalt surely be like God if you partake of this tree. He just lied, he just lied, and, and poor Adam and Eve swallowed a hook, line, and sinker. Now, if you, let's look at Cain's genealogy, his DNA. The po posterity of Cain is found in the first Toledoth, Vitalik, that of the generations of the heavens and the earth, and not the book of generations of Adam. The posterity of Seth goes forward with the generations of Adam, showing that the two accounts are distinct and deal with two different subjects. Cain's genealogy is located in chapter 4, and Adam's genealogy is found in chapter 5 of Genesis. So who is the father of Cain? Uh, here's one of the few places in the Word of God that God speaks to Satan directly, Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity, enmity between the seed, thy seed and the woman's seed. And the word seed here is zera, and it's the Hebrew 2233. And this is literal sperm or posterity. There's no way to deny who the father of Cain was. And here we go again. We're talking about DNA, beloved. And you go to the parable of the terrors. And the devil sowing his evil, wicked seed in the middle of the night. And Christ explains this. It's the devil. It's what he did in the Garden of Eden. He impregnated Eve. And the terrors are the literal descendants of Satan. And they're the literal, they're literally the progeny with the devil's DNA running through their blood veins. And you got further proof, John 8, 44. Who was the first murderer? Cain, of course. You're of your father, the devil. And the lust thereof you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the liar and the father of it. And in Revelation 2.9, basically, the church of Smyrna and Philadelphia 
were able to distinguish between the serpent seed and they could distinguish between the tares and the wheat. They have the key of David. They know the genealogy of Cain and his children. And let's go to 1 John 3, 12. Not as Cain was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. So basically, the reason why Cain rose up and murdered his brother is because the enmity between the two seeds, it was prophesied by the Lord. He fulfilled it. Cain rose up and killed his brother. Why? Because his brother's works were good. And Cain's, the, the offering that Cain brought to the Lord, Lord didn't accept it. Uh, th- this is further proof of, of, of Cain's uh, identity. To take this a step further, the tares are part of the parable of the fig tree and of the naughty figs in Jeremiah 24. And I'm not going to read the, go through all of this. You can read this, beloved. This is the parable of the fig tree. The good figs are the, the wheat. And the, the bad figs are the terrors. It's just that easy, beloved. It's not rocket science. All right, and this, they were planted in Jerusalem in 1948. Now learn a parable of the fig tree in Matthew 24. When his branches yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. You know, once that tender shoot is set out there in Jerusalem, you know that this is the last generation. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that the end is near at the, even at the doors, for verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. So you got these, these uh, examples of the Jews, of the synagogue of Satan. Now the, the Kenites, the sons of Cain, hide behind this identity. They claim to be Jews, and they're not, and they're of the synagogue of Satan. They're terrors. These are the terrors. They're not wheat. They're terrors. But they hide behind this deception, beloved. All right. And if you want to be in the right church, the ones who are teaching who these people are and they know who they are, they got their number, they know who the fallen angels are, they know who the devil's progeny are, they they are aware of all this. They're Smyrna and Philadelphia. And beloved, if you're not one of these churches, you're in the wrong church. There's overwhelming evidence to prove the seduction in the Garden of Eden. Here are more key words uh, that only the Greek, uh, that only the Hebrew can can bear out. And I got all these words here, beloved: touch, naga in the Hebrew, pleasant, uh, beguiled. Uh, I mean, this is exactly what happened to Eve. She was beguiled by Satan. She was wholly seduced, and as a result. There were fraternal twins born, and they call it super fecundation. This is when you got twins in two separate wombs, and this is a medical, this happens to, still to this day. It's not that common. You know, now we go through some more Hebrew words, which uh, we got seed there is 2233. Three. It's zero in Hebrew, it's literal progeny. And then you got the Hebrew toledoth for the generations. And naga, to touch. These are all descriptive terms that you're never going to figure out what happened in the Garden of Eden unless you go into the Hebrew. And these are all here for you, beloved. Uh, And you've got all your numbers there. I've done all the work for you. Go to your Strongs and look at it for yourself. Now, there's a connection between the Illuminati and the sons of Cain. Not all Illuminati are the sons of Cain, but... There are elements within the Illuminati that are. Okay, and and I'm just going over Revelation again, who are calling out these, uh, who are calling out these these uh, fakes, these people that claim to be Jews and they're not. All right, so I'm going to skip that. Anyway, I I wrote that there in uh, 2014. Now, let's go over the fallen angels. And it came to pass when men began to, to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, the subject of bearing children between a man and woman is established. The sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. Now, beloved, there's no way to spiritualize this. And the, the, these angels left their habitation, came down to women, and married them 
And these Geber, these were an abomination to the Lord. And this is why the Lord flooded the earth. And these were mighty men. These were Geber. And it's, look at mighty men in the English. And it's the Hebrew word Geber. And these, these, these Geber were giants. Some of them were eight, nine, ten feet tall. They had six toes, six fingers. They were an abomination. And you got your word giant there. That's where it's Rapha, Nephilim, prime root. There's all your strongs. If you want to go in there and just work yourself to death, you can do it. There's your, there's your Hebrew word, Nephilim. Now let's go over Jude 1.4. For there were certain men crept in unawares who were before of old, ordained by this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. These men of old disobeyed God and bypassed being born through the womb in the natural birth process. They also denied the plan of salvation. That's the only way you have to be born through the womb of woman. That's what Nicodemus was explaining. If you want to you be born from, from above, uh, you want to be born in the spirit, you first got to be born of the flesh. That's all he was talking about. You got to be born first. All right, so I'm not going to go over that. Now, um, and keep in note, beloved, uh, and Enoch also in Jude 1.14, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Enoch was preaching his heart out against this mixing with these fallen angels. Okay, and now here, if you want... If you, if you don't believe the, what happened uh, between uh, women and, and, and these fallen angels, well, all you got to do is go through here and look at their progeny. They're called Anakim here. Long necks, okay? They're, they're giants, okay? There's your Hebrew. 60-62. It's a long neck. It's a giant people. It's around uh, Philist, Philistia, you know. The Lord told Joshua to kill every one of these freaks, Okay, and that's why the Lord was so harsh in his judgments of these, because they were an abomination. They went against the plan of God. And now you got the Hebrew word serpent, and it's nakash, and you, you can see it. He uh, cast a magic spell upon people with his divine incantations. And there you got sun, and you got the Hebrew word ben. All right, and you got all your Elohim, and your son. Now let's go over this account of sons of God. It's only by divine specific act of creation that any created being uh, can be called a son of God. For that which is born of the flesh is flesh. God is spirit and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. Hence Adam is called the son of God. In Luke, uh, in Luke uh, 3, 38. Those in Christ having the new nature which is by direct creation of God and there's your references, can be called and are called sons of God. This is why angels are called sons of God in every other place where there is expressions in, uh, is used in the Old Testament. Uh, and we have no authority or right to take the expression in Genesis 6 2, 4 through 4 in any other sense. Moreover, in Genesis 6 2, the Septuagint renders it angels. Angels are called spirits. Okay, and, and there was a fall of angels, it's certain. Jude 6 explains that the nature of their fall is clearly stated in the same verse. They left their own or orchiterion, which is their habitation in heaven. They left against the will of God. Okay, now this, this is exactly what happened. These guys just left heaven came down to earth and got women pregnant. And this, this, they now, as a result of this, uh, they've been sentenced to, to death. Okay, now I'm going to finish this up very quickly. Your DNA, DNA is the essence of who you are as a human being. If Satan is allowed to continue down this current road, he will have succeeded in destroying God's own creation called mankind. Look at the world today. The distortion of God's creation is increasing every day. The perversion, of the perversion of creation is a mockery of the Lord. 
DNA is his and his alone. He owns you and he has sovereignty over you and not the devil. Procreation is under attack like no other time in history. The lines between male and female are being distorted. The institution of marriage between a man and a woman has already been destroyed. Transhumanism is just around the corner and procreation will become a thing of the past if the devil gets his way. Eternal life through technology is the devil's main goal for mankind. Get your next child from a vending machine. Choose your own DNA as a clone or someone else's DNA from a clone database. You can choose your color, size, IQ, personality types, but not male or female. There's only one sex. That's where all of this is headed. It's right around the corner and many will be taken by surprise, beloved. I'm going to speculate and play the devil's advocate. The first thing I would do in this plan uh, to take procreation away from God would be to sterilize the human race. I would then deceive the public into believing it's a natural occurrence due to unknown factors. And facing extinction, the human race would then be forced into creating clones and resort to transhumanism, becoming nothing more than eternal robots with no soul all based on the devil's deception, therefore defeating the plan of salvation that was designed for this age. All right, and the Lord will stop him in his tracks and make an end to all things in this age. Are you a soldier in this battle or are you a victim? And the current medical procedure will change your DNA. I am certain of it. Are you part of the God seed or are you the devil's seed? And beloved, That's the end of this lecture, Uh, but make no mistake, this is happening right now, and it is happening fast, and do not do this medical, this late current medical procedure, beloved. That's my warning, and this is all my own speculation, my conjecture, But beloved, I believe it with my heart. I believe this is true. And I'm sharing this with you because I love you and I don't want you to be deceived. All right. I love you so much. And we'll see you on the next, next lecture, beloved. And much love from me to you.